We personally thank you uh, for uh, this uh, practical uh, live demo. Cool. Thanks, Bob. And thanks, everybody. Thank you, Nick. Well, I think this is the perfect segue because, I mean, everything has been really practical in these sessions. Uh, this is why we definitely have the best track, by the way. Um, but jokes aside, uh, we are looking forward to uh, uh, to this next session, which is going to be um, essentially talking about AI uh, and uh, refactoring legacy code, which is a huge topic uh, right now. And we're going to be inviting uh, a... Scott uh, Wisham, uh, with over 40 years of experience, um, a, a real uh, Java uh, champion and veteran. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Hi, Thank Scott. You hey, how you doing? Uh, Yes, good, good. How are you? Doing great. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, oh, sorry, you were about to say. I, I was just going to say, yes, I, I do have uh, a lot of experience in legacy code. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is why this is why we invited you. We're extremely keen to hear and leverage your expertise uh, on this. And so, um, because I know we all are very interested and we have little time, I'll just uh, give the mic over to you. All right, excellent. Well, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, if uh, if you want the slides, that's that's the link to them. My name is Scott Wearsham. I um, I have been working in in legacy code for most of my career. Probably y'all have too. You just don't realize it. The code that you wrote last week is legacy code. Everybody's all excited about what AI can do for generating new code, but what can it do for legacy code? So. Um, the uh you know i guess the most obvious thing you can do for doing uh, for for legacy code is to um basically take some code submit it to a an ai tool and and ask it what's what's wrong with this code um and so i i submitted this to five different AI tools. This, uh, this is a very simple contrived function here, uh, strings of length five in uppercase. So it's going to basically take a, an array, a list of strings, uh, get the string, map them to uppercase, look for any that are five characters in length, and add each one to a result, return that result. So that's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, if you're an experienced Java developer, you'll probably say you probably don't want to use for each for that. There's better ways to do it. But there are other things in here that you may not have caught that um, we're going to see if the AI catches. OK, so um, so the first I, basically I'll, I'll make a list of all the all the different AI tools that I use. First, we got uh, chat GPT um, and it noticed what I suggest about the, the for each and um, and it suggested we should use the collect operator instead, which is is proper uh, Java idiomatic code. It also suggested that if you call to uppercase on a Unicode uh, string that are characters that and sometimes that'll change it to be a two character string, uh, yeah, two character string instead of just a, a single character. So that might throw off this five character check. Um, I don't know how many of y'all noticed that. Um, so it also suggested renaming the function to be clear that you're doing the check before you're doing the conversion just so that people would know. Um, and it doesn't like the the generalized input here, this uh, import Java util star. It suggests that you should use uh, the specific library as back, should use Java util list and Java util array list so that uh, uh, there it's all specified. That's a tabs versus spaces argument I don't want to have right now, but uh, ChatGPT has its opinion. So since I'm a Windows developer, uh, Windows user, I tried it on MS Copilot because if you're on Windows, you just can't get away from MS Copilot, OK? Um, and so it, uh, it found the, the, the Unicode uppercase problem and said that it may change the, the string length. Um, 
and it suggested that you do the filtering before you do the mapping so that it would be less confusing. So I guess you, you could do that too. Um, so next we have Google Gemini. And it points out that you should use collect rather than for each because that's the proper idiomatic approach in Java streams. It also points out that while it's good to not have side effects in code, some users might expect it based on how the function was named. And then uh, ChatGPT uh, generated this, uh, this outline. So, and it was very proud to point out that uh, Google, Gem Google Gemini did not mention the two uppercase length issue, which ChatGPT caught. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of strutting there. Um, then just for fun, I tried Grok. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. It, it pointed out that using for each isn't idiomatic Java, and we should use collect instead. It also caught the Unicode problem, uh, calling a two uppercase. But it caught even more. It pointed out that array lists are not thread safe. And so if we decide to change this to, instead of saying stream, using a parallel stream, that it would have undefined results. Um, and and then it noticed that we don't check for null input. And so that would throw an exception, and it should probably be handled more elegantly. And then it provided the code to do that. Um, and then it uh, generated expected output for some sample code and showed that it did, in fact, work. And it summarized its finding and offered to rewrite the, the code using all of the suggestions that it had. That was, that was really pretty nice. And then since Claude is sort of the, uh, the de facto developer tool, um, I tried it in Claude. And it's, uh, it pointed out that in some cases, uppercasing might change the length of string to a, a resultant string so that we should do the filter before doing the uppercasing. But it didn't catch the for each operation, being poor Java style. Um, it did give an explanation of uh, you know, this is a potential output for a function. And so, but it said that the, the application was correct as written. So here's a, a table showing the different things that, that each one caught. And you can see that uh, Grok is, is our big winner here. And Google Gemini um, is, was the weakest. But every one of them has certain strengths and weaknesses. And I just... What I take it, take away from this is that you should not depend on ChatGPT. I'm even using the uh, the pro version of ChatGPT, and so you should you should actually make sure that you're you're comparing this against uh, yeah two or maybe even three uh, AI tools to to check your code. Pretty interesting. Um, now. What if you've got, say, a thousand lines of code? No, I do not own a Tesla. <laughs> uh, and so if you've got, you know, a couple thousand lines of code like, like I have, hundreds of thousands of lines, you, you, you don't want to break it up into 15-line snippets, um, you know, like, like this to, to try and have it go and, and regenerate it. What you want to do is... Um, you want to break it up into small enough chunks that it'll fit in in the uh, the AI window, um, and yeah, basically this is the uh, the the code that uh, ChatGPT generated the code using all of these suggestions from from everybody. Um, but yeah, if you if you have say more than a hundred lines of code, then um, the it, your your results are not going to be quite as good. But then again, it's sort of like walking around your your office and, and asking somebody to evaluate the code. If you give them 15 lines, uh, different people are going to find different things real quickly. If you give them 100 lines, they're going to glance at it and they may not find things. Um, why might uppercase change the string's length or have a Unicode side effects? Okay, so in, in Unicode, there are some strings. Actually, one of the, the AIs gave an example that if you use a beta, it turns and you uppercase it, it turns into an SS. I don't I don't know the uh, the specific character, but yeah. Anyway, um, so with that in mind, I also thought, well, what about debugging? Do we use AI to debug? So um, you probably heard from uh, uh, 
I'm sorry, I can't remember the guy's name right now, but he, he spoke about Junie. And so I, I work alone. I don't have any developers working with me. I'm supporting a 20 year old application, don't have any documentation for it. And I was trying to, to debug something and or trying to test something and I couldn't get it to generate the, the right information. So my problem is, you know, I'm, I'm, this method is keeps returning no, and I don't know why. And I'm staring at it all, you know, for 20, 30 minutes trying to figure it out. And I said, I'll just ask Junie, okay? So um, what I did is this is the prompt that I gave Junie. I said, the in initialization that this object is not working as I expected, calling this method on that object always returns a no. How can I properly initialize the data so that the function returns a value? So it goes and it generates its, its results. So reviewed, it, it gets the structure of the code for the object it's looking at. It opened this another one of the Java files and looked at the method that how that was in, implemented and initialized, opens another file, uh, makes sure that the constructor is working as expected, gets the structure, folks looks at the test data initialization, opens the test file, saw how it's tested, saw the data output and, and how it was what was expected. Um, it opens a test, looks at it some more, scrolls down a little bit, says, ah, this method doesn't um, show this particular issue in the test class. And we find out, ha, it doesn't, my, I have a fake object that goes and overrides this, uh, this table model. And it does not initialize, it doesn't override the, the get table data item. So basically, I'm, I'm missing this override. So I need to give it the data that it needs to have. Um, so this is the issue, I need to go and, uh, and extend this, this table model, and I need to override this class. So pretty interesting. Um, and then it, uh, it was so helpful when it added this, this uh, method to to my test class so that I, I can get it to work properly. But that was pretty darn cool. I'd been stuck on it for at least an hour staring at the code and it it came up with this. Um, so I'm keeping a close eye on it. Oh man, I'm almost out of time. So there are other tools out here. Um, there's Modern uh, or Open Rewrite, um, and I would strongly recommend you get into that. Um, there's also Kodo, which you it's a uh, it's a plugin for IntelliJ and also for uh, for uh, uh, VS Code. So it's a really handy tool that does all some all all really cool stuff. And then there's Another one that's uh, that's nice called refact.ai. I like that each of them. Thank you, Michael. That's exactly the, uh, the example that AI caught. Um, uh, refact.ai is uh, is a, a really handy tool. I like that all of them have a free version because as as you start using these tools and you know 15, 20 bucks a month for for each tool, it starts to add up a while. Um, so I. I'm supposed to be wrapping up right now. Um, do we, if we don't have any questions, I've got more I can show you, but uh, let's see here. The fake data loader class extends that table model fails to override the data table, which is likely an abstract or critical method independent. Right, yeah, it, the, the data table, data loader table model, it's a swing, uh, uh, Java swing thing that you you youngsters probably have never heard of, um, <laughs> but it uh, it's so that you can use a, a table like an Excel table and you can access the data. And so I just I don't want to have to use a UI in my test, so I just did a fake override of that, so it wouldn't be going sending messages back and forth to the UI. It would go and, and catch all those and, and handle it. Um, if there are no other questions, real quick, I want to show you uh, something that uh, that we did. I work on the approval test project, and we had this problem where it was building up the uh, the uh, file paths in a way that we didn't expect, and so we needed to go through and refactor how it was doing things. We created a new function that would go and 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 get us the file path the way that we wanted. But it was done in in about uh, 20, 30 different places of the code. And it wasn't like a quick 
uh, uh, you know, find and replace type function. It needed to kind of turn it inside out to, to make the function going, going right. And so I fired up, I said, you know, why, why don't we have Genie so we don't spend an hour going in here and, and rewriting everything. And Genie went through and this took probably 10, almost 15 minutes to go through and look throughout the entire project. And it made these changes. Then it gave us a little report of all the changes that it made. It, uh, you know, took three lines out and added three lines in. So basically changed all these files. And I thought that was really cool. And then we started looking through because we were skeptical that, you know, some AI is going to do stuff and took a look at the code and, um, yeah, it did do what, what we expected, turned everything inside out um, the way we expected. But then it also went through and cleaned up things. So we had this, you know, we were creating a file name and then calling new file on this file name. You're sticking the file separator so you know whether it's Windows or, or Linux. And so do that correctly. Didn't even realize that there's a file constructor that takes a... Uh, a, a a path, a subpath as a, a part of the, the constructor and goes and sticks in the, the separator for you. So we didn't even need to call our function. It just went and refactored it in the way that, that we expect, uh, we didn't even think of. And I was just super impressed by what, what Juni can do. Um, and so, yeah, if you're using uh, any JetBrains tool, take advantage of Juni. It's, it's a really, really handy tool and can, can help you get going quickly. Um, so I have gone a little bit over my time, but uh, I'm, I'm open for any questions or, or any, any other comments people have. Thank you so much, uh, Scott. Uh, that was, um, I think everybody probably, uh, their heart uh, skipped a beat when you showed that graph. <laughs> and, yeah. and the model <laughs> uh, where are we going here? But, uh, very insightful, nonetheless. Yeah, um, that's yeah. a scary thing. So, holy cow, you'd think Gemini would be better. Yikes. Actually, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this because this is this is going down the history books right now. Um, um, and, and just just uh, for visibility, we are uh, sharing some of the very cool insights um, from uh, the, the talk. And this one is definitely one of the controversial ones. So thank you, Scott. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, um, uh, just wanted to say that, yeah, we are getting closer to the end uh, uh, of, of our time here uh, with this, but extremely, extremely interesting uh, topic. Uh, there is uh, a lot of merit in saying that this is probably one of the biggest areas right now, like refactoring legacy code. I think if we don't uh, nail this, uh, anything else that's being built is probably going to be uh obsolete so and and, and absolutely useless so that's how you get a hold of me if you need to yeah <laughs> exactly um yeah so just want to say thank you uh, on behalf of everyone in the community i see that the community has been super active so i think everyone really enjoyed the talk so thank you so much scott excellent i'm glad you liked it